Hey everyone, uh, Mr. Tweet here. So today's video, we're gonna start going over aggregate demand, um, which is the main, you know, the first part of the main model of mac macroeconomics. So um, we already have kind of the, the business cycle graph that we drew, we have the PPC, we have the circular flow model, all of those things kind of illustrate our economy in one way or another, but the main model that we use to, to, to kind of show our economic system is the aggregate supply, aggregate demand model. This is like the equivalent of demand and supply from unit two. So we're going to start today, I'm going to introduce you guys to aggregate demand. Aggregate demand, again, we're going to draw it and it's going to have an X and Y axis just like demand. We're going to have, instead of having price over here on our Y axis, we're going to have our price level. Think of price level kind of being like inflation. So like this is the prices of everything. And then down here, instead of having quantity like unit two, we're going to have the quantity of everything that we're going to call output. So we can put O for output or more commonly, I'm just going to put real GDP. So we're going to draw it like this. We've got price level up here. I've got real GDP here. And then our aggregate demand curve is going to be downward sloping. So that right there is, and we're going to label it A, D for aggregate demand. Now what aggregate demand is, is it's just the demand for everything by everyone. So like this is a really abstract concept, but you can just think of it as like how much it, do people want to buy things, right? And in general, what this is saying is like if prices are higher, people aren't going to want to buy as much stuff. Prices are lower, people are going to want to buy more in general. That should just kind of make sense. Um, there are three reasons that we have why aggregate demand is downward sloping. I'm not going to go over those in these video, in this video. They're a little complicated. Um, we're going to touch on a couple of them later. Um, but you know, it, it's, it pops up on an AP test, you know, as maybe a multiple choice question every, every, every few years or something. It's not a super big deal. So I'm not going to really go over it in this video. Um, but I just want you to have this, you know, know how to draw the aggregate demand curve because we're going to be, this is the basis of our model. Understand that aggregate demand is downward sloping and have a general idea of what it is. It's just the demand for everything by everyone. So that if we were to like, you know, if I was to walk out the door of the classroom and on my drive home, I was to see like, oh, look, the taco shop is having a sale on, on burritos. I don't get a burrito for lunch today, right? And I'm continuing on and I go and I go, oh, look, you know, like they're having uh, you know, a sale at, you know, at Best Buy. So maybe I'll stop in and maybe I'll buy a couple Blu-rays or maybe I'll buy a new video game because they're having a sale and everything is cheaper. So it's the idea that like, if prices of everything fell, we probably would be like, sweet, lots of deals, lots of good stuff to buy. Or conversely, if the prices of everything started going up, right, inflation, we'd be like, oh, this doesn't seem like a very good, you know, at least for the time being, it doesn't seem like a very good way to spend my money. So that's aggregate demand, downward sloping, aggregate demand curve, price level on the y-axis, real GDP on the x-axis. I'll see you in just a minute for the next video. All right, peace.